Now you're ready to add your widgets or your embellishments to your iBook. So I'm going to show you one that I just finished working on. And just like you will be able to launch yours from the desktop, you'll go ahead and save it into your server space and then drag and drop it onto the desktop, just like I have mine. And then you double click on it and it'll launch for you. So this is my book right here, starting with my title page, or I'm sorry, the cover of my book, my table of contents, which I went back and fixed, so now it looks correct, and then this is my first page, my first section, etc. Now right here is my first widget. Now the widgets are located right here, and it shows you you have a choice. Gallery, media, you can do a little quiz if you want to import your keynote. There are different ones that you can use. I focused on gallery and media. Those are the two that I wanted to add to my book. So this right here is actually a picture gallery. This one also has a picture gallery right here. And then the last widget I added was an audio recording that I made. It was just using GarageBand. I just made a quick little podcast. So those are just a couple of the widgets. Now I wanted to show you how to go ahead and work on those widgets. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up our sample that we were working on. And I'm going to work and put in a widget. I'm going to select this page and I've decided I want to put a gallery on this page. So I go up and I select widget and I clicked on and I click on gallery. Now this is very, very simple. All you have to do are drag pictures from the desktop into your widget. This right here, uh, let's say this is the first picture that I want to drag in. I'm going to drag and drop it right there. It's going to come up right here, and I now have the ability, if you click on Layout, I have the ability to say what I want it to and how I want it to look. If I want there to be a title here for Gallery 1, I can take that off or I can click it on. And right here, if we scroll down, I can write what this picture is about. And I can click back on here and I can go ahead and add my next picture in. So I'll pull this down and I will go ahead and drop my next picture in. And it pops up right there. Now if you want decide you don't like the arrangement, let's say you want this picture to be right here, all you have to do is click on the actual picture and just drag it right there and it'll flip flop them for you. Then you can come down here and you can change it right here. And then you want to say who the picture who took this picture. So this is Sun Goddess took this picture. So this is very important for you to understand. If our books are going to go out onto the internet, out into the world, it's no longer okay just to select pictures off of Google Images. We don't hold the copyright on that picture. So we have to locate pictures that are going to be alright to be put out on the web in case this book gets seen by more than just yourself which of course is our whole point. So you need to go to this website which I will provide for you and it is through a photo sharing site called Flickr which some of you may be familiar with, some of you may be posting your pictures on them. If you notice this right here is talking about what the people when they upload their pictures what permission they are giving other people to use their pictures for. This right here I've gone and looked through it allows you to use their pictures for non-commercial purposes. In other words, you couldn't use their picture if you're going to try and sell this book. So first I would recommend that you try and find pictures that you have taken yourself, or not try to find, but take pictures yourself, or use this site. So let's say I'm looking for pictures of geese. I would go ahead and type in geese. And then I have all these pictures of geese. Who People who have taken their pictures say that I can use these pictures of geese as long as I'm not trying to make any money off of it. So if I go ahead and click on this picture, because let's say I like this picture. This is interesting. You can't just drag and drop this into your 
into your uh, onto your desktop the way you can with Google Images. What you need to do here is you have to go to Actions, click View All Sizes, and now you have you see this. It says some rights are still reserved by SC Hargis Photography. So this is who we need to cite underneath our picture. Once you have established who took this picture, then you can go ahead and go back. And really the easiest thing to do at this point is just to take a screenshot since we know it's okay. And to do a screenshot you hit Command Shift 4 and you get these little hash marks. And then you can just go ahead and drag across the picture. And it will go onto your desktop. At this point what I would suggest you doing is going right over to, to your screenshot and then click on it so it gets blue and then click again so that you can type things in. Type in the name of the person who took the picture. That way it will be really easy when you go back and have to put in your widget who this, who's responsible for this picture and it will be all right there for you. You can have someone else in your group that's going through and collecting pictures. That person can put them all into their server space and then when you're ready to collect and put everything into the one place on the one computer for making your iBook, you can just bring your pictures, put them on the desktop, and then drag and drop them into your widget, which I will show you right now. So remember you've got your widget, you just take your picture, drag and drop it right in. And you can add more pictures. That is an example of the photo gallery widget. And as you can see, you can go ahead and move this widget wherever you like. Let's say I want to put it right there. So I'm going to pop them right there. And when you're done, you can just go ahead and click that closed. If you need to get back in to do anything with this particular widget, all you have to do is go back up to Inspector. And you want to click on the little widget. If I'm doing other things over here, you want to make sure you click back on the little widget button and it will take you to your widget. Another widget that you can use would be to add in media. So let's look at this one and let's say I want to add in some media here. So I would just go up to the widget, click media, and let's pretend I want to add in, I, well I could add in a movie. To add in the movie you're just going to go to media you're going to find whatever it is that you wanted. Let's say I wanted to get a movie. It would go to iMovie. If I wanted to have an audio, it would go ahead and pull an audio. Now I mentioned that your project may, your teacher may require that you have a glossary in your book. Glossaries are very easy to add into iBooks. What you want to do is look and see at this top line up here if you see anything that says glossary. You want to click on the, the view button. That's going to allow you to put on the glossary toolbar. See how this has just come up right here. So let's say the word that I want to use in my glossary is controversy because I think maybe some people don't know what that means. I can just go ahead and highlight it and you notice how it comes up right here. I can click add term. Now if I go to here I can click that and it will say okay well tell me what controversy means. So that's my definition of controversy. And once I've done that I can just go ahead and click that back arrow button and I'll be back in my in my book. Now you notice that the word controversy now is heated is is bold. So when someone is viewing your book on an iDevice, if you click on it, it will tell you what that particular word you, how you have defined that particular word. The last thing you want to do when you are finished with your book, if this is a research book and you are presenting your findings, so it's a nonfiction book, and you want to say where you got your information from, you are going to go ahead and you are going to add a blank page at the end. And for this one we're going to do two columns because generally we want our book to 
be held open. It, it, it shows nicer on a screen when you're holding it horizontal. So that's how we've set up all our pages. So we've got this last page added here. We've got a nice space right here. And we're just going to create a text box. I'm going to move the text box right up here. Enlarge my text box. And then just like my text from before, I've already written out my bibliography page. So I'm simply just going to copy and paste into here my bibliography. And now I have my completed book. And at this point you have a decision to make as to what you are going to do with your book. And you can go up to Publish, which would take you out to iTunes, or more than likely you're going to click on Export. And you're going to choose it to be an iBook. Click Next. You're going to keep your title, desktop, and then click Export.